Well everybody, I did it again. I bought another Airco welder, another beast. This one is a uh, Airco 200 amp DC low amp crater filler bumblebee welding machine with 32 control panel. Um, this is almost the same exact physical size and probably about the same weight as the last one that I bought. This one, however, is actually, uh, I, I don't plan on keeping and using this one. This one's got a few problems, the first of which being that uh, I believe this is, yeah, this is a three-phase unit. It says right there, primary, this is a three-phase unit. I don't have three-phase power, so I'd have to uh, make a, uh, probably a rotary converter to run it. And to run it with any kind of... Uh, power I'd really need like a 15 horsepower electric motor and uh, it's just not worth it for me to do it um, interesting this is not AC it does have a switch here for continuous or start high frequency so it does high, have high frequency but it's got no AC so it wouldn't be good for doing aluminum TIG um, let's see what else I don't know what else to tell you about it other than the only reason I bought it is because this was another eBay find. It was about an hour away from me, fairly local. Uh, not as close as the last one that I bought. But uh, the uh, seller wasn't getting any offers on it other than my initial lowball offer. So at the end of the, uh, near the end of the auction, I, uh, I gave him a, a final offer of 100 bucks, and he ac agreed to that. So I went down and handed him the 100 bucks cash today, and it's mine. My reasoning behind buying this, even though I don't intend on using it, quite simply, I spotted in the photograph, there is an Airco foot pedal. Now I have what I believe is a Miller foot pedal on the one that I have now. I think it's almost the same part number, the RFC-23, the AG might be a different suffix, I'm not sure what that means. But anyways, if that's a good foot pedal, I'm probably going to keep that foot pedal with my welder and then sell the one that's probably a Miller and I'll probably get more money for the used Miller pedal than what I paid for this whole welder. On top of that, I've also got, he threw in whatever was with the welder over here so I, I already can see there's a, uh, here's a scratch start TIG torch. This is a weld craft. Uh, I don't see the. I don't see the number on this one. I'm not sure what number of torch that is. It's not a flex head or anything. Looks like I see some electrical tape here on the back, so it looks like the back thing here is broken. But I know they have replacements of those. Um, got a stinger and what looks to be a decent amount of welding cable which as we all know because of copper being so expensive this is really what I was after some more welding cable um, this appears to be well that's the TIG torch lines let's see oh there's a it's got some damage to it but there's a protection sleeve on this TIG torch that's nice uh, we got some hoses for the gas this looks like a big electrical extension cord. This is, yeah, this is the power. So they are including the power cable, which looks like it's undersized maybe for this welder. He even threw in the breaker, and I'm looking at the breaker. That's a 30 amp breaker. I don't know what kind of, let's see, this was a, all right, well, this is a 200 amp welder. So on three phase, they could probably get pretty good duty cycle out of this thing. Uh, um, on a 30 amp breaker three phase. For those of you who haven't seen my other uh, Airco welder videos, this is the Airco welder that I bought that I intend to uh, use for TIG. And this has got uh, this is an AC DC unit with high frequency start, and uh, that came with the uh, foot pedal that looked like a Miller foot pedal. I'll compare those side to side at some point. Um, but basically, this this is like almost the same thing. 
as far as the cabinet, they're almost identical. Faceplate's obviously different because it's got more controls on the front of this one because it's an AC-DC unit. Now my AC-DC unit is actually a Miller made for Airco by Miller or something. There's some kind of affiliation there, but it's a exact uh, same model as a, another Miller model. I wonder whether or not there's a corresponding Miller model for this unit. So maybe if any of you guys are uh, familiar with these old welders, does that look like any Miller models that you know? I'll probably do a little Googling just for the heck of it. Unlike the other one that has a very distinctive alphanumeric part uh, model number on it, this one just says stock number 1343-9409. And then the serial number would probably tell its age, but that's a HH041564. And I wonder uh, if I could take that and go on the Lincoln website, I'm, I mean the Miller website, and actually figure out the age of the unit. I'm not really that interested in the age of the unit because I, I I intend to basically scrap this thing for the most part. I'm going to open it up and see what parts might be common between the two units that I might be able to save. I mean it might be worth even saving like the fan motor or something. I know that this fan motor certainly isn't seized up. I don't know if it runs but the whole drive home, the wind was blowing in there and making that thing spin like crazy, so the fan's spinning freely. <laughs> loop of Romex on the top there. They just loop some Romex around, boost it around itself, and use that as a place to want to change through or something to lift that thing. I didn't realize that wire was that strong. I'm not going to trust it though. down to a pallet and uh, the pallet just fit between the wheel wells so it's a little bit of a tight fit they used the forklift to put it in there so they just slid it in so it might be a little stuck between the wheel wells so hopefully it'll swing free and backwards as soon as I have the weight off of the truck I'm just gonna drive the truck out from underneath it like I did with the last one keep an eye on that uh, rear wheel on the truck there because uh, it's riding pretty low on the springs from the weight of that thing. tubing cutters. I don't want to ruin the blade on these. Alright, I just unplugged the uh, the two connections to the con remote contact to control and remote amperage control here on the welder so I can take the pedal out of the way. The pedal's one of the prize things I prize the most out of this whole deal and uh, you know a good used a good used pedal like this this is used on several different Miller and Airco models but a good used pedal like this can easily bring a uh, hundred bucks or more on eBay um, so at some point in a future video I'll do a video on what's involved in taking one of these and testing one of these and taking it apart and cleaning it and repairing it if necessary uh, I'm going to have to do that to both of these pedals that I have because I'm going to keep one and I want it in good working order and I'm going to sell the other one and I want to sell it in good conscience. Now, that being said, I've, I don't know a lot about welding but I know a lot about electrical. And I've read 
on several welding forums where in more than one instance a good old transformer welder like this has been thrown out and thought to be defective when in fact the problem was a problem in the pedal. You got problems in this pedal, you're going to have problems TIG welding for sure. And you're going to think that something's going on in here when in fact it might be just this is dirty. It needs to be cleaned and serviced. Just took a quick look under the hood and see I already made an error. I said that was an air uh, scratch start TIG torch. I think I said it, I might have said that it was an air cool, or I might not have mentioned it. If I said it was an air cooled, I was wrong. And if I didn't mention it, I'm in the clear. <laughs> Two solenoids here and here marked gas coolant. So what ends up happening is one of these lines is supposed to go to a water cooler. Uh, they, I think they call them water coolers, but in reality, you don't use water, you use a special coolant. But, anyways, um, point is, I think I got myself an extra torch. Uh, see several parts here that are going to be identical on this unit as they are to the other unit. This, Even though this is a three-phase unit, the three-phase power is mainly being used to run the transformers. The control unit in here, the control functions, most of these are going to be running off straight 120 or 220. Uh, these here appear to be, these solenoids for instance are, let's see, I don't have my glasses on. And these are 120 volt solenoids by the looks of it, so they're using one half of a, a leg. Well, I don't know, maybe there's a DC. I don't have a schematic diagram with me right now, so I can't tell you exactly, but I'd be willing to bet these solenoids are going to be identical in my unit as they are here. So I'm going to definitely save these two solenoids in case I need a solenoid, or even if down the road I, I have one go bad, I can replace it. This unit right in the middle here, this little box, it's got a PC board with a few little uh, electronic components on it. Not a lot going on on there, but what this is, is this is your timer for your um, your your gas flow. The uh, wiring here for both of these timers actually uh, uh, both of these solenoids actually goes to this timer board. So what happens here is when you uh, stop welding and the arc is extinguished this timer will keep these solenoids energized for a little longer to allow post flow of the shielding gas and to allow post flow of the coolant for the torch tip uh, or, or the handle I should say. But anyways that's what this little, this little device is responsible for. And if I have one of these go bad I think I'm going to have an extra one right here. If this one's good. I don't know story on this welder is that it was in working order when it was put into storage. Alright, so I was just yammering on all about this thing and uh, the battery died on the other camera so I'm not sure how much of the uh, stuff was recorded so I'll just do it over again and splice things together to make it look nice. These are your uh, coolant line connections here. This is to the torch. This is from the uh, from the water cooler that would have been hooked up to this. Uh, this is to the uh, gas supply. This is to the torch for the gas. Uh, up here, these two little uh, units right here, these are where you set your spark gaps. And um, the spark gaps are what are responsible, I believe, for creating the high frequency. This makes a heck of a noise when it's running, making that high frequency. I think that might be why they call this thing a bumblebee. Because I think it makes a, a, a distinctive buzzing sound. Um, this unit right here is a large capacitor. Above this unit, up under here, where it's hard to see right now, are two additional capacitors. And I can actually see 
brownish liquid that has leaked from those units and is running down the inside here. The common problem on these older welders that have these capacitors in them, capacitors go bad, the chemical inside tends to leak out. That also messes with the value of the capacitors, which can, then can cause problems. I believe those capacitors are also in the high frequency uh, circuit. Apparently, from what I read online, there are no direct replacements for those capacitors, but there are several off-the-shelf parts that can be combined to create replacements for this. The capacitance value is the thing that's tricky on these. You need to find one of this particular value, capacitors of this particular value that can take this rated voltage, and they're a little hard to come by. However, you can add capacitors together in parallel, and when you take capacitors and put them in parallel, the equivalent capacitance of the circuit you create is e equal to the uh, capacitance of each one of those individual capacitors added together. In other words, C1 plus C2 plus C3 <laughs> equals CT. Uh, don't worry about it. That's a parallel circuit. Which, by the way, is the exact opposite with resistors. When resistors are placed in series, they add R1 plus R2 plus R3 equals RT. But when you take capacitors and you put them in series, the formula becomes 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C3 equals 1 over C total, CT, I think. Now, don't quote me on that. Again, that's, that's history. Um, so I'm going to get to work on taking off all of these hoses and connections and taking all this stuff off and see what I got for uh, length of these cables.